Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and today we're talking about INFJ internal conflicts. And typically when people think about INFJ internal conflicts, perhaps they think about the struggle between introverted intuition and extroverted sensing, or extroverted feeling and introverted thinking. I say those things are not necessarily going to cause internal conflict. An internal conflict is a struggle inside between things that we hold to be of equal or similar importance. So we feel and experience internal conflict because we are torn between values that are true to our core and extroverted sensing is not true to an INFJ's core. So when INFJ makes out its values, it's going to say its core values are, for example, privacy, originality, your own state of mind, your own thoughts and opinions and theories. It is sensitivity, understanding of others. It is... Uh, understanding and seeing nuances, it is understanding emotions, it is knowing and feeling connected to the community, having relations, connections, and managing and being good at managing these connections and relations with other people. It is um, having a vision or a sense of direction or somewhere you're going. And an internal conflict cannot happen between, say, for example, our need for privacy and the environment's pressure on us to be more present and attentive to others. That's not an internal conflict, that's a conflict between the internal and the external. So there's a difference here. What I'm focusing on in this video is to focus on internal conflict and internal struggle. And your key biggest sign of internal struggle is emotional turmoil and anxiety. We experience anxiety or anger or negative emotions the most when we are in a state of internal conflict, when we are torn between different things and we don't know which way to go or how to get there. So a common classical struggle is that between your vision and your understanding of nuance and of yourself and of your own emotions and values. So INFJs feel torn between knowing which path to walk and the future they are headed towards, but also they feel torn between their experiences and their connections to other people. They feel torn between that ability to empathize with and see other people's feelings and at the same time to know you have somewhere else that you are meant to be or somewhere else you're meant to go. So INFJs are often torn between their connections to other people and their attachments to helping others and to empathizing with others and seeing other people's side. They are torn between that and what they experience as their own journey. And they notice that sometimes these two are not in sync. They notice that sometimes they have to follow their own path. Sometimes they have to break up relations, move forward in life, go somewhere else. Not because they have any problem with other people, but purely because their intellectual visions and goals have brought them somewhere else than where the other people are. Now, hopefully with the internet, those struggles are less than what they used to be. But I've experienced that one many times in my life. Uh, it's been a struggle when I had to move on and get the university education. It was a struggle I had in politics when I wanted to move forward and start up new projects. It was a struggle I had with uh, old friends and family when I was uh, trying to make new decisions about my career or where to live and when I had to move to the Netherlands. So I felt torn between these connections many times, but it's a struggle between your intuitive and judging side and your introverted and feeling side. And let me tell you, the introverted feeling side in the INFJ is way stronger than it has been said theoretically. Introverted feeling is one of the dominant functions, one of the dominant primary motivators of an INFJ. The INFJ is always seeking interpersonal understanding they are searching for interpersonal awareness they're seeking to know others to understand others to feel with others and to feel with and to understand self to know self and to understand one's own emotions so these things are things you're constantly bringing with you and what i found was that a lot of INFJs uh, set visions at the expense of their own emotions and i tell a lot of INFJs this that your vision and your intellectual goal is too grand in scale and it denies your own humanity and a lot of INFJs miss out on this. So they set a goal or intellectual aspiration at the expense of their own humanity and their own awareness of self. They know if they listen to themselves that this vision 
puts too much pressure on your shoulders. It requires you to be somebody you're not. It requires you to be stronger than who you are. It requires you to deny integral needs inside yourself to succeed. But still, they feel cool to this vision, and that can be a difficult. To feel cool to a vision that requires you to become somebody inhuman or some kind of a superhero. That's not gonna work out. I've never seen that work out. I've never seen that lead anywhere. What tends to happen is this drives the INFJ into a state of extroverted thinking rather than introverted feeling. It gets them to put on a strong front. And this front can only be maintained for so long. It requires, it brings upon you so much anxiety, so much of a feeling of weakness that the, the grander your vision becomes, the more ashamed you start feeling of yourself, the more you start feeling like you're not enough, like you're not good enough, like you're, you're too weak, you're too frail. And I felt this so much in politics. In politics, I was so focused on my grand vision or utopia for humanity, and I, was, and I had to do so much to exceed through, and I had to work so hard to make it happen that I could never sit down with myself and do things that I knew were important to me. For example, taking time to process my emotions and to understand myself, to know who I was, to introspect, to think about where I was going and why and how it related to my purpose. So what the internal struggle here is between your vision and your purpose. You can have a vision, you can see a way society could progress, a utopia, but you also have a purpose and the purpose is connected to your introverted feeling. So as you bring to balance these things, you also start noticing that, yes, there is a greater vision for humanity, but I have a specific purpose in this vision. I am not meant to carry this whole vision by myself. I am meant to carry this vision alongside my purpose and to re realize this vision through my purpose. So what I also realized was politics was not meant for me. I was not meant to be a politician. I was meant to be a writer. And hopefully through being a writer, perhaps I could spark some ideas or I could help people. Maybe politicians, maybe some other people, maybe people in the community, people elsewhere to see this utopia true. So aligning vision with purpose is one of the key solutions to this internal conflict. But there is another one, and that is between your introverted intuition and your feeling judging. And so often it can be that when you're keening in on introverted intuition and you're going into all those existential questions it brings about and you start trying to understand and explain life and why you're here and what your point is and what made us all come together here on this planet, why we live, why we exist. When you start asking yourself these questions, you might get theories, you might get insights, you might get an understanding of how the world works. But you might experience an internal conflict between this need and your attachments and connections to the community. And you might feel here, and this is one of the biggest internal struggles of an INFJ, that of feeling misunderstood by the community because of your vision or ideas or theory or insight. Having your theories or insights misunderstood by the community, having other people not get what you mean, having other people look at you with question marks on their face going, what is he actually saying? INFJ's introverted intuition can cause them to have some quite strange or uh, hypothetical or theoretical ideas, ideas that might sound far-fetched at first. There is no basis in reality, there is nothing to show people, there is nothing to bring forward to people. It's just in your head when you start out with it. And that can be a lonely realization. Realizing your thoughts are private, they're only held by you, not by anybody else. And realizing that other people do not understand it and other people do not know it. And there is a conflict here between connecting with people and talking with them. And there's this sensation in going out and talking with people that you're dumbing down your ideas and you're when you're trying to explain to other people what's go happening inside, what you end up explaining is some kind of oversimplification of what's happening inside. You're unable to communicate what you're thinking to other people. You're unable to make other people understand what's going on inside. And what you end up telling other people is something different than what, what you experienced inside. And so there is an internal conflict 
between what you're experiencing and with what you're telling other people. And uh, this struggle is someone that I've been working on for such a long time. And this is why I'm a YouTuber and this is why I write blogs and why I've always been writing blogs. Because I have and I have to recognize that a need to connect with other people. I have to work for the tribe or for humanity in some form. I am and I like sharing ideas with other people, connecting with others, building community. Even if uh, this puts a difficulty or a stress on me to get to know my own ideas better and to become better at explaining them to other people. I can explain something to myself, but I also need to be able to explain it to other people. And I need to find a way to work hard to constantly make sure I balance these two needs so that I get the time I need for privacy and to develop my own ideas, but I also get the time to connect and reach out to other people. And the internal conflict here is you can feel angry because other people don't get it. You can feel very upset by other people for why don't they get it? Why don't they understand? Why don't they know what I'm talking about? And uh, at the same time, um, you can feel afraid that people won't understand or you can feel afraid that uh, you're missing something or that you're telling people the wrong thing. Yes, there is a fear in INFJs of misleading people. So there is a fear that you could be wrong and that what you have thought about theoretically, what you have going on here, it's not correct, it's not accurate, it's not actually represented by reality. So there can be a fear here from extorted sensing when you're talking with other people. What if other people adopt my ideas and try them out and test out my theories and they turn out to be false? And so this fear coming from feeling and judging and extorted sensing is uh, what can get the INFJ to compromise or keep themselves from saying anything at all. So there have been many times in my life where I've kept myself from saying anything at all and of course I've often ended up regretting that even more. When I didn't tell other people what I thought, when I didn't share my ideas and that caused other people to make mistakes because they didn't know, they didn't realize it, they didn't think about it. And you know, that feels even worse than telling people the wrong thing and ending up realizing you made a mistake. It's worse to not guess and to have your guess turn out to be true than to guess and have your guess turn out to be wrong. Being wrong with something you did is a lesson to improve from. Doing nothing, however, teaches you nothing. So. That's constantly something I have to keep reminding myself to settle this internal conflict. So these internal conflicts are between your communication with the community and with other people. It is between your own in independent state of mind and your independent vision, where you're headed in life, where you see yourself going, what you can imagine for society and for yourself, as a, uh, for, hum <laughs> for your, the planet, for your home, for your future. It is a conflict between your own interpersonal awareness and your understanding of your purpose. And it is uh, between your need for theoretical ex awareness and for explaining life and why we are here and to answering philosophical and existential questions. The reason these internal conflicts are difficult to solve is that while they are carried by our dominant functions, while they are carried by positive needs and positive motivation, positive feelings like happiness, joy or peace or pride or so forth, these emotions, these positive emotions can also be blinding. What I find is uh, we can feel blinded by these positive emotions in the sense that we, we focus so much on them or on one specific positive emotion that we forget about the others. Like, think about it in relationships. When an INFJ is angry, they can become so cold, so uncommunicative, so selfish all of a sudden. They can, but when an INFJ is uh, feeling happy, they are so helpful, they're so eager to be there for others, they're to show up, to be there, to support others. And uh, this positive emotion you feel when you're helping other people, that can be blinding in itself because 
you can hold on to that emotion so much you start denying yourself the time to be by yourself to have privacy to sit down with yourself to think about life and what you're here and you can feel torn between these emotions because you start thinking one of them is better than the other and you start uh, forgetting about other emotions that are of equal importance or perhaps when you're in so deep in one emotion like when you're so making so much progress on your vision and you're starting to get so much more for forward in life you start repressing or forgetting about other things and you start experiencing for example shame because while you're getting forward in life you're also forgetting about your partner your relationships or about other people and as you start realizing that you start avoiding it uh, while you focus on something positive something negative might turn out on the other side and you're so focused on the positive you avoid the negative and you end up uh, uh, eventually attracting some kind of a tidal wave of negative emotions like oh shit I should be dealing with this I really need to be dealing with this holy crap what's going to happen what's gonna happen now uh, why didn't I do that yeah that's the problem with internal conflict thanks everybody for joining in hope this video helped you understand yourself better and remember, try to find an inner balance between all these needs inside yourself. Try to find a way to integrate your vision with your purpose. Try to find a way to balance the community with your own ideas. Try to make sure you find inner peace, joy, pride and satisfaction with yourself all together. Not one over the other, but all together. Because I think that's the only way to find flow and happiness and something that is a little more permanent and sustainable in the long term. Thanks everybody for tuning in. If you like this video, leave a like, share, subscribe. Also visit my Patreon, patreon.com slash ericdor if you want to support me and my future videos. Thanks and see you all in the next video.